So in software, and even to a certain extent in medical devices that use hardware and software, the design cycles are quite quick. And so patent protection is, is kind of long in comparison to that. And so you don't find that patent protection really drives innovation the same way it does in, in biopharma. In biopharma, it takes a long time to go through clinical trials it, and patent protection is similarly quite a long time. And so I think that the transition, you know, it, being that it's, it's better matched, patents become so important foundational patents for even starting a company. Patents become, um, in a way, uh, one of the only assets of an early stage company is, you know, is that patent portfolio. And so what I found that was during my postdoc years while we were incubating still in academia, but with the awareness that there was going to be the right time to transition out, I think there were a few things that had to come together we needed to make sure we had a good relationship with our tech transfer office because we wanted to set the stage for licensing that IP and licensing it exclusively. Um, I think we also wanted to kind of solve as much as we could of that chicken and egg problem of, you know, you need, you need money to get data to de-risk, to get money to get data to de-risk. So where do you jump in? How do you do that? And I think the academic setting can be really helpful because you can um, start to apply for translational grants that might be appropriate to take into an academic setting. In our case, we got a grant from our city. They're the New York City BioAccelerate program. So it was a grant to allow us to do um, the experiments that served as the kind of no, go, no go decision around starting the company, we were able to do that as academics and generate IP that we later licensed.